Catherine Kathy Cortauld lived on the far side of the river in a small log cabin her husband Jude built before he died of the scarlet fever in the summer of 1870. Some people from the nearby town of Bethlehem believed he'd picked up something awful from one of the many bordellas he was known to frequent, but Kathy did her best not to listen to such spurious, hateful gossip. People were jealous of what she and her husband had achieved in such a short span of time, and when folk are jealous, they allow their tongues to wag. That was how she saw it, and nothing much had happened since to convince her otherwise. Jude was a good man, and she missed him. Well, good in the sense that he provided. She wasn't so certain about everything else. A slim, strikingly handsome woman, she worked tirelessly to keep the family small holding in good condition, something in which she excelled. Nevertheless, loneliness gnawed into her bones. The land was uncompromising, the soil hard, the weather lacking in rain. She longed for a partner to share her burdens. The late afternoon, she heard the spattering of gunfire. She was on her knees, weeding through the root crop. She stopped. Senses alerted. Cautiously, she raised her head and squinted toward the distant tree line. In one direction, the river formed a natural barrier for her land. Another, a cluster of trees interspersed with bracken and shrub. It was from somewhere within this area that the gunfire came. For a long moment, she considered running back to her cabin to find the Henry carbine she always kept in her buggy. It hadn't been fired since Jude was alive, and she had no idea where extra cartridges were kept. So she squatted and waited and prayed that whoever it was wouldn't approach her place. But they did. Four men riding shaggy-looking mares, their faces cast into deep shadow by the brims of their dusty hats. She flattened herself, putting her cheek against the earth. Perhaps if she remained deathly still, they wouldn't notice her. They were close now steering their mounts around the root crop field. She gave up a tiny prayer of thanks for that. Where should I say who is in there? Could be they heard the gunfire. Could be they seen us. These three statements came from three distinctly different voices. One clearly Mexican, one old and gruff, the third much younger, a tinge of fear on the edge of his words. The fourth when he spoke, was that of their obvious leader, a man well used to giving orders of others doing as he bid. If they had heard, we'd see him running, and I'd kill him dead before they'd open their blabbering mouths. So who lives there, Jonas? I don't know, and I don't care. Maybe they is in town picking up supplies. I don't see no buggy. This much was true. Kathy did possess a buggy, but it was stored away in the barn. When she needed to, she rode into town on her coat, Pharaoh. Pharaoh had thrown a shoe some days previously, and the blacksmith was due any day now. She sheltered in a small stable together with her burrow friend. Being out of sight proved another reason to thank God. The riders moved on, the clomping of hooves gradually fading away until ears straining to hear, Kathy caught the sound of water splashing. They were crossing the river and heading away from her place. She let out a long sigh, rolled over onto her back, and settled herself before climbing to her feet. She gave a look around. Satisfied no one remained behind, she broke into a run. Not toward the house, however, toward where the gunshots came. In a dip amongst the trees where the harsh warmth of the sun could not penetrate, she found him. Shot two times, one in the left shoulder, one in the chest. He appeared to be dead, the pallor of his flesh waxen, drained of color. He was young, had been handsome, smooth face. They'd taken his gun, his hat, his boots, leaving him to bleed out alone in this sad and dreary place. It was the blood that made her stop and take a closer look. Dead don't bleed. Quickly, she got down on her haunches and felt his neck for a pulse. A tiny gasp escaped from her throat. He was alive.